Hangout Podcast, where two bearded film fans watch the best and worst horror movies of all time. My name is Luke Condo of Kate, and I'm joined by my regular co-host, Mr. It's Mr. Ben Errington. And we've got a couple of chaps on the podcast today. Uh, a couple of people from the Trash Tapes podcast. We're doing a crossover episode. Uh, so we have a lovely Mr. Johan and the lovely Mr. Ed. Do you want to introduce yourself? Um, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, first of all, calling him Mr. Ed, um, I don't think that's appropriate <laughs> for the fact that he's not a horse. He's not a talking horse. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Okay. So just, just to clarify, my name is Johan Chapal. Um, um, I am basically the host and the inflictor of pain in on the Trash Tapes podcast. And the main thing is I always bring my uh, victim, Ed, to sit down and watch famously terrible movies. Um, we have done quite a few as we speak. Um, at the beginning, it was mostly me being the expert, but it looks like slowly but surely, like any kind of Padawan and some kind of sensei, I have basically have been teaching the ways of trashy movies to Ed. And now he's, I think I would argue he's my equal. Isn't that the, right, Ed? The student has yeah. become the trashster. Yes. I've kind of come well I've, I've kind of saw like DJ Ed now as well with the mixer and stuff it's like <laughs> yes, it was you introduced me as DJ, hey DJ Ed like, <laughs> it makes me think of up. those old like Harry Enfield sketches with the DJ <laughs> <laughs> yes nice. uh, smash but... you nice. yeah cool yeah. Um, yeah so I mean how long, how, many, how long have you been doing the trash tapes for well we have been doing it really for about two years now, but um, we we don't have as many episodes as you, uh, mainly because we, uh, to, in order for time reasons and also just to, for our own sanity, we only did once a month, right? Um, so we're now on we're now on episode twenty. We're going to be on episode twenty ish now, but by the time this comes out, will be a few more episodes. But um, each one being a a different trip, as it were, down the down down the lane of trash. Um, and it, that's what's so great about it. It's, it's not just like you guys, which just do horror movies. We do a bit of everything. We do action movies. We, we've got, uh, we've, I've got some other things in the pipeline, like art house stuff and sci-fi. So we branch out, basically. Yeah, and you do uh, uh, some live screenings, I've seen. Oh, yes. Uh, we've done two live screenings, haven't we, Ed? Yeah, they've been really good. That was kind of like an end goal for us, but it's come quite early on, really. Because mm. it was it was going to be something we build a, a way towards, but we we talked to Adam, uh, the cinema program at the Quad, and he was really up for like he likes trashy movies as well, so he's really up for like uh, doing screenings with us and stuff. So, yeah, we just hosted a couple of movies. We've done uh, Miami Connection, and we did the Troll Two was the first one we did. Yeah. yeah, and they've gone down really well. They can't they can't the first one was pretty good, but the second one was even better because people sort of knew about it a bit more then on the second time. So. That's Heavy promotion cool. on my end. Heavy promotion on my end. Just me going like, watch this movie. It's the best. It's got ninjas. It's got bikers. And it's got cocaine. And it's got everything. Why are you not watching this movie? Um, and it was... <laughs> it, it, honestly enough, what I love about the screenings is that I love the fact that I'm sharing my love of rubbish movies to people and seeing their first reactions to some of them are priceless. Yeah. 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 I'd love to do like a screening at some point, but maybe... I mean, me and Ben don't live in the same place. So it's quite difficult to do. Yeah, yeah but... it's a shame. <laughs> just, just, just do this. <laughs> just do this. Just do it. Just yeah. do this. Just have two webcams at a corner. And just there is a grind. We're gonna watch it as it is now. Just like a weird, bizarre Twitch stream yeah. on some kind of thing. There, yeah, be kind that, of fun. that's a bit creepy. Yeah. <laughs> just okay. so I mean, well, just we're actually hoping to uh, host a screening of this, aren't we? Yes. The the reason why we're doing this is because we have, we were asked and 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 obviously we are suckers for promotion and anything else. Like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. We'll do it for the fans. And so we were asked to do the movie we're going to be reviewing today. Do you want to say what it is? I could tell it's on the end of your lips. It's on the tip of his tongue. <laughs> what right, is it? So, so first of all, I would like to apologize for giving you this uh, very special experience. Um, the movie we're going to be reviewing is Spookies. Okay. Well, before we get on to Spookies and all the Spookies, uh, we need to talk about <laughs> what we've been watching. I mean, mm. we normally sort of have a back and forth and just say what films we've been watching, what TV shows and that kind of thing. Have you guys got anything that you want to bring up or, or um 
Uh, well, I haven't really been. Weirdly enough, I've been watching a lot more stuff on Netflix uh, recently, during because we're in our isolation stations and we have a lot of free time. So uh, a lot of stuff on Netflix, and I've also been binge. I've basically almost been binge buying a lot of stuff on DVD whenever something just arrives. It's like, oh, it's coming now. So I've, I've recently rewatched Knives Out, which oh, is. Yeah. Yeah absolutely brilliant i saw it in the cinema and i saw and I, I saw it again and i just think it still works i love it a bit and um recently ed and i a while ago ed and i we went to see you we went to see the invisible man didn't we yeah that was excellent i really i was really impressed with that movie mm, really really good stuff yeah. um other than that then i've also was what i've also because the third because the third series season is out of it i've been watching the castlevania anime oh the warren ellis one yeah, I need yeah. to catch up with that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was pretty darn good. Um, and and the thing is, it's good even if you don't know anything about the video games. It's just good stuff. It's vampires. yeah. I watched the first story. season of that. Enjoyed it. Mm. Really good. Yeah, me too. What about you, Ed? Uh, I've been watching Better Call Saul. That I really, really love. That that's <laughs> like because it's 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 sort of like because I I really like Breaking Bad. So mm. it's kind of like carrying on that kind of fix it's very similar but it's 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 pretty good it's got really gritty, gritty I've, heard drama. Say, I've heard a few people say it's better than breaking bad yeah yeah well i'm kind of i don't know whether i agree with that but it's it's it is very very good it's like how really many, sort of there's five seasons, seasons. How many See, seasons? i'm so far behind i think i, I maybe saw like two seasons of that and it's one of those that behind. takes you a bit of time to get into. It's, it's like I didn't think much of it to begin with, but I really yeah. like it now. Um, mm-hmm. I've been I've been mainly watching TV stuff. I've been mm-hmm. watching uh, with Sophie RuPaul's Drag Race. I love oh RuPaul's God! Race. Oh it's God! Amazing. It's so great. entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. Every time, and here's the thing though. Every time I used to go over to your house uh, to do like recording and stuff properly, back before before the pandemic happened, um, it was hilarious because Sophie would be there, and then was like saying like, "Okay, we're having dinner. We're all watching RuPaul," and it annoys me because <laughs> I'm sitting there and I am just. I, I, I get super flamboyant and flamsy anyway, but when I watch it, I'm going, God damn it, Jesus, no, no, stop doing that, girlfriend. And I'm literally doing snapping, I'm getting yeah. annoyed at everyone, I'm getting involved in the drama, and I oh, hate me it too. afterwards. Me too. Yeah, I hate it. I hate My, it. Uh, <laughs> sounds like you hate you hate how much you love it. That's what it's that one of those like. it's 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 yeah. like it's it's like an abusive relationship, yeah. basically. I, I can't <laughs> leave it. I never I can't leave it, I never but I get understood every time. it for a long time and Kate used to, my missus used to put it on all the time. And I used to get really angry that it was on. But I looked over once and she'd paused it and there was uh, a woman dressed as a sandwich crying in the arms of a woman dressed as Marie Antoinette with nipple tassels. And I was like, this is insane. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it is so <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah, so then I got really into it. Sold, yeah, yeah. It is the kind of thing you want like, because well, I wouldn't watch it if it wasn't for Sophie. Yeah. Uh, she got me into it. It's all the puns as well. I love yeah. the uh, like the right. constant ribbon. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah. yeah, other than that, is, uh, I just watched Spookies. So I guess we're all primed and ready to jump Go. into Spookies. Right. Okay. Right. Spookies. So, um, right. So just before we go into anything, let's go in, in a couple of words or sentences. Describe your feeling as you were watching Spookies. I felt like I was being <laughs> attacked <laughs> by Boglins. You know those little toys? Boglins. <laughs> Boglins! I should have wrote that down because I fought Boglins at least five times. I yeah. fought Boglins. The Boglins. I always wanted a Boglin, but they were expensive, weren't they? Yeah. They had like the same teeth. The, the way these, the things in the, the mouths yep. were, it was, it was a, they were Boglins. There was no way to put it. I feel like this this film almost became 4D for me. Like I feel like I could smell like the latex and yeah. all of the, <laughs> the monster effects. I was like, yeah. I could smell that latex. It's so rubbery. I could smell it right now. Yeah. Oh my god, brilliant. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad that this, that this movie's giving you some kind of bizarre out of body experience because it has for me. How about you, Ed? Uh, yeah, I was uh, at first. It, I was finding it like a slog, like a real slog. And then when the sort of the crazy effects started kicking in, I was like, oh, okay, this has got something redeeming. Yeah, like, they, they came quite looked, later on. Like, yeah, they did. Generic Halloween costume type 
<laughs> like enemies. <laughs> I'm saying enemies like it's a game, but it was a bit like it felt like I was playing a game or some kind. Yeah, it, 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 it's this, a really this, bad Resident Evil. No, I was thinking more. This this reminds me of in terms of how the layout is and all the monsters. It finds a little bit like it's it's like playing a game of Slaughterhouse without the killer fucking uh, guy with the with the machete to do all the slaughtering because oh, he's, he's a monster yes yeah, splatterhouse sorry splatterhouse yeah. you've got like monster here monster there monster here monster there monster there monster yeah. there it's a uh, it's kind of overwhelming <laughs> so right i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you a bit of a breakdown because usually on the trash tapes we usually go through context because i kind of feel like sometimes in in most trashy movies the backstory for these are far more interesting than the actual movie itself and um, so we're going to go for a little bit here. So Spookies is a 1986 American independent horror film directed by Brandon Faulkner and Thomas Doran, which was let with additional footage directed by Eugene Joseph. Now, there's going to be a story involving that. OK, now the film was given a limited theatrical release in 1987, but then it became really popular. And this is where it grew its cult following when it started to air on cable TV multiple times, almost on a rotation between 1988 and 1991. This is why it became so successful, because it was just constantly forced down people's throats on TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that so is, who, who sounds is, like who's his, the his wonderful life. The director were Brendan Faulkner and Thomas Doran with additional footage directed by Eugene Joseph. When the end credits, credits rolled, I didn't see any directed by credits roll up. Well, there is a story for that. Okay. All right. So, okay. So let me just break this down for you. So uh, the two directors, the original directors, Brendan Faulkner and Thomas Duran, were first-time directors, right? But they have basically done a lot of stuff. They were doing a lot of indie horror movies and stuff like that. We're talking over-the-top exploitation stuff. But they never got their projects fully completed. So this is a summary of their guys' expertise. Um, when... Um, so they were able to still have all these scripts and all this stuff they've never been able to film. So they made a sort of a showreel, and they made showreels and sent it around studios and stuff like that uh, to get something going for a different movie altogether called Twisted Souls, right? Um, when that happened, uh, basically one of the – there was a financier that got involved. His name is Michael Lee, and he looked at some of the showreel stuff and looked at a project that never got out of – that. Ne a, Footage from a movie that never got out called Hellspawn. So already I'm excited, right? So <laughs> there's an unknown movie called Hellspawn that's never got made properly. And Michael Lee said, I like these guys. I'm going to give them something. <laughs> so okay. they backed this movie. Um, so they start filming. They start filming um, the movie in about 1984. They start filming with this financier's backing and his links to other studios which makes it very very fascinating stuff um and the movie was very different twisted souls which is what just happened to be was was a very different movie altogether and you can kind of see that because the the idea of the script and i think i have a quote here actually uh yeah i think i have a quote here uh, basically the whole point of the movie was going to be a subversion of the haunted house trope where he's because he they were able to find a really really exciting location like uh this sort of house the house by the way let's look into it looks awesome the outside of the house it looks like yeah. old school timery house yeah um interesting fact to throw into that this house was a 24 room colonial house that was abode with by one of the americans founding fathers ah, interesting John Jay, apparently. So he apparently, uh, this is a history house. This house has history already <laughs> in itself. Was he one of the uh, dusty fart monsters? <laughs> oh, we're going to get into the dusty fart monsters. <laughs> oh, yeah. So basically, <laughs> it was oh, fantastic. I wouldn't be surprised, actually. So this is a history house. They're able to have access to this history house. They look into the house and realize there's 24 rooms. And so he's thought to himself, Right. The directors literally said, and I quote, there is a monster every two pages when he wrote it. Mm. They batted out. They looked at this place and said, right, we're going to write something. They batted out a script in two weeks, which you can kind of tell. And um, and then they said the whole point, they want to do a subversion of the haunted house where it's not really a haunted house. It's going to be a little bit like Evil Dead. It's going to be a little bit like that, but with a different monster in every single room. 
Yeah, I got the Evil Dead vibes, especially when yeah. what's the name yeah. flipped uh, and started speaking in the voice of that Paul Daniels guy, <laughs> the magician. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so Bobby get... McGee was there as well in the background. Yeah, <laughs> just imagine it going in. It's like, now for my next trick, I'm going to summon something else. Um, pretty much. It was kind of ridiculous. Um, it gives yeah, it a theme park ride vibe, doesn't it? With yeah. the different monsters. Yeah. It definitely feels like that. It feels like you should be sitting in a car somewhere and you should be roller coasted around. We're going in now. We're going into the vampire room and yeah. just <laughs> kind of do that. Um, the, the, even the director, Brendan Faulkner, actually said, like, it, this was an opportunity for us, but they, we felt scared. We felt like we could do something that was a different kind of scary. One review of that actually said that there was more monsters per minute than anything else, which, yeah, that sums it up quite nicely. Um, so yeah, this was full on. It was intense. They purposely designed it to be, let's just make as many horror movie horrors as we can. They had a lot of connections with people who worked in gore because of all the previous stuff. And so that's why the movie gore, the gore level and the, and the animation in this movie is actually surprisingly compatible. Well, like it's actually good. It's weird. Like halfway through the movie, it, there's like suddenly like, uh, some great effects moments where someone gets like, melted down or something, yes. but like it's, it comes out of nowhere. Like it didn't. I wasn't expecting that level of competence in the gore. Uh, but, yeah, it's good. It's got The zombies have, like, a sort of fulci zombie-looking uh, style mm. to them. Yeah, I, I thought it was, the effects were great, actually. I really enjoyed it. There's even Pretty a bit easy. of stop frame in there as well, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. At one point. It's got, you've got prosthetic stop frame. You've got some nice old-school effects in there. It's yeah. pretty decent, the, the gore effects here. It's not bad. And so it's the only problem with the movie is that you don't really, like you said, it comes out of nowhere. You're, never, you're not introduced to this until really much to the end of the movie. And so you're like, what? It's bizarre. Really, really bizarre stuff. Um, what happened eventually is when they shot everything, all right, it was great. They, they, they had this idea going. It was wonderful. And so they started to do the post-production. They started editing it. All right. Um, but then... Some creative and legal issues between the producers, uh, between the producers, the directors, and the financial backer prevented the final push production to go for. So this is final editing, the scoring, any post production effects, etc. It kind of stopped them from doing it. Apparently, uh, there was a two and a half hour version of this movie. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, in mind. Oh wow. Oh, uh, which was a, miss- a missing hour somewhere. There's a missing hour somewhere. There was a two and a half. The movie was originally two and a half hours, but it was a rough cut. It was just a rough cut. Yeah. It wasn't meant to ever be released, right? Michael, on the other hand, really was kind of scared as he was watching the movie whether the movie was going to do any good. So he he took the rough cut behind the backs of the director to the studio to show them what the progress was so far. Mm. Which one was Michael? He was the producer. Michael was the financier. Right. Okay. So the financier yeah. basically said, like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I uh, I need money. I need to make sure this makes money. So he took the final, the, the the rough cut, took it to the studios, and then the studios hated it because it's like it's slow, it's sloggy. This is not the pace we're going for. Um, it's uh, it's not it's it's too violent. It's too all this without a proper cut with mm-hmm. any with without the pacing issues and so on and so forth. When the directors found out, they got pissed. They got really, really pissed to the point that this is where they start having a couple and arguing and saying like, you, uh, like saying like, no, you don't understand. We need more time. We need to do this properly. While Michael was saying, you're pissing away your money. Actually, that's a quote, according to the article. Says, you're pissing away my money. I need results now. <laughs> so because of the contract issues that they signed with the studio and so on and so forth, um, they couldn't the directors lost the opportunity to use their footage, right? But the producers, on the other hand, had a different contract, which stated that they actually had some ownership of the production. So, (laughs) basically, this led to about a good 40... So that means, technically, the movie couldn't... The original footage couldn't really be used. But the studio... But the financier and the studios argued they can be used. So it came with a compromise, the compromise is, okay, fine. We will shoot about 65% of the movie new, right off the bat. Right, okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. With a whole new cast and crew, 
everything else because they couldn't get bring the original car they couldn't bring the original cast back so they shot 65 percent of the movie with whole different plot lines everything else and then just cut it together to make some kind of coherent sense in air quotes um to get this settled so the financier hired eugene joseph to direct more footage which was placed together with the finished footage from twisted soul to create the movie spookies because they don't actually own the rights to twisted souls that's but the only homage to that is at the beginning where it actually says the twisted souls productions wait so which half of the movie was twisted souls yeah. and which uh the one that's better <laughs> the like the latter half then no the newer half so the older <laughs> half the one with all the gore yeah, so the latter half of the movie. Yeah, so the, the, Souls, the, the right? one with all the gore, one with the original, that's the original piece. Okay, the one with yeah, all yeah. the gore, that is Twisted Souls. Okay, the yeah. the one with the magician and the reincarnated bride and the 13-year-old kid and the cat man thing, that's all <laughs> new footage. Yeah. That's all new. That's all new shit. Right? Yeah, because I hated all that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Too. You can even tell the production was totally different. You can see that they were they were actually they now had to shoot all this again with half of the original budget to finish off sixty five percent of the movie that didn't already exist. Which is why you can notice that the movie has a lot of things involving padding. Yeah, it's there's a there's a lot here. So yeah, by that point. They said, okay, fine, we're just going to... And then the studio said, fuck it. We've, we've wasted enough time it is, just launch it out. And this is where, how we ended up with this horrendous slice of a movie. Spookies is actually two movies in one, and you can tell. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's... that Frankenstein-esque mishmash of different bits, doesn't it? Now, yeah. together. Now, that you've men- now that you've mentioned it, like I feel like I can tell, but at the time I just kind of thought it was just a bit of a lull in the in the film, like various yeah. parts. I kind of just felt it was a bit, it was, it was a bit of a, a roller coaster. I did think like um, so. Who's the main? It made me feel a bit sick. Character supposed to be because like halfway through the film, it becomes the dead lady who had been brought back to life. Mm. She becomes like the the final girl, but that's weird because she's not like a, it introduces a normal character. It's, it's yeah, it's weird. It's a weird movie. <laughs> The, uh, the original the original character is supposed to just be the 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 people who go into the house. Yeah, they were the yeah. they were the heroes, right? They were supposed to be it, right? But the whole thing, like with the magician, the reincarnated bride, the cat man, the weird sort of witch thing that's living in the basement, um, the all, little boy, the little boy as well, Billy. the little was boy, that, that and the weird, cre- the little boy and the weird creepy stalker that seems to magically appear there for no reason. <laughs> Got a uh, ride for an old man. <laughs> so ridiculous. Yeah. Um, all that brand spanking new stuff. Obviously, the reception for that became, well, people noticed. Um, it didn't do very well. It The whole budget, um, the whole budget uh, was about $5 million to make. It only grossed $17,785 in the box office. That's Christ. That but people a... are still doing podcasts about it today. So <laughs> Yeah, they are. It's because of the end. It's because of TV circulation. Uh, but oddly enough, it was a huge success in... Okay, do you want to guess which country this place was a huge success in? Canada. No. Was it an Asian country? Yes. China. <laughs> Part of yeah, China. Yeah. Hong Kong. Hong Kong! Thank you very much! This movie was a blast <laughs> in Hong Kong. It did <laughs> so well. It's now become it. It did so well. It was circulating in cinemas for a very long time in Hong Kong in 1987. I wonder why. I wonder was it the Chinese Spider Lady? Maybe. Or like... Oh yeah, the Spider the Spider Queen. The weird that, ass the, Spider the, Queen. The weirdest thing about that is that when she appeared, she had like her own her own theme music. She had like some Asian yeah. Asian music when she appeared. <laughs> yeah. God. I was so, like, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> oh, Maybe that's why. Yeah, it's uh, brilliant. Um, so I yeah, kind of imagine it doing well, like on TV, on on cable TV or whatever, because like it is like that constant a constant hit of just like monsters and various different effects. Yeah. So I can imagine it doing quite well in that in that instance. It's yeah. it's like the movie. The best way to describe the movie, it's like a sucker punch. It happened. The suck. It's a, it's like a guy punching you, like doing that, right? But it keeps punching you 
every two minutes and you don't have time to get your wind back so a moment you go oh, all right okay i'm fine now oh jesus christ do it again just all right this is another yeah. thing now jesus stop it I, I'm, I felt pummeled in and the movie's not even that long the movie's only 75 minutes and i felt like i've been clobbered constantly over the head what was the what was the first moment in the film because i the, for the start of the film i was kind of was zoning out a bit i've got to admit but then something happened and i was like oh shit was not expecting that. Yeah. What, was, what was the moment for you? Okay. Um, right. So well, the moment for me that where I realised that this is going to be this is going to be something special for me is the uh, the introduction to the, of the Catman and how he buries a child. That's horrible. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> that is yeah, yeah. horrible. Like, There's something seen, about like yeah. a few buried alive scenes. Like I'm thinking particularly Casino. Where Joe Pesci gets his head caved in with an aluminium baseball bat and then buried alive. Something about that is really, really horrible. And even yeah. in a film like this, I find like it really, really kid. horrible. It's weird though because he seems yeah. to be burying that kid for like hours. Like he just seems to be constantly <laughs> shoveling stuff on. I'm like, what? It's, <laughs> when is he going to fill that hole? It's <laughs> too much hard work, isn't it? It looks like too much hard work. I'm like, I don't think I'd ever want to bury and a kid. The worst thing is you can, see, you can see like the kid is just lying there. And obviously th this is the part of this is the new director. Whatever it is, it's like saying, right, we can't afford a dummy. So it's a kid, just lie in there while we throw dirt on you. And you can, it looks really bad because he's in his face. He's doing this. He's already fighting it off. He's just going, eh, yeah. eh, eh, oh no. First, I was a bit like Luke at the beginning. I was like, sort of, not really interested. The first time I started to get interested is when I this bit. I'll play a clip. Happy birthday, Billy! <laughs> <laughs> it's just when you like he opens the present and he's got the severed head in the oh, box. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm I'm interested now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like, oh, okay, we're doing something weird here. We're doing it's something. It's a surprise birthday yeah. party. I I Come on, guys! I know you're here. <laughs> But all right. you, notice, you know all the effects on the like sort of the voices for the like the demon. It sounds like he's talking horrible, to an like, empty pipe bean tip. Effects. Like he was, they were just talking down a pipe, like a yeah. <laughs> like a toilet like roll, drain pipe. <laughs> the, the toilet rolls are, are too valuable in this day and age. Um, but you know, it it, it sounds yeah, it sounds like they they recorded all his lines in a bathroom, and they're just yeah. this is fine. We will run with this. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, let's. Okay. So basically, that's all the factoids for that. It's a fascinating watch once you realize the backstory to this. So we're going to go right into the plot. Now, there's not much of a plot. I'm using air quotes because there really isn't much of a plot here. In fact, I'm going on IMDb and there's two plots. And you know what? That sums it up because there are literally two plots. So, first of all, um, first plot is um, actually, Ed, before we, we usually do this with a bit of music, do you have any music? Yeah. Um, let's put some new music in, shall we? Um, while we do that. Can you hear it? I'll, I'll turn yeah. it down because you can talk over it. Nice. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> All right, lower it down a little bit, just a tiny bit. Okay, cool. So, right. So the plot is basically, uh, there's two plots here. So I'm going to say both of them. So one is a, a source. So a sorcerer tries to sacrifice a group of people inside his house and the intention of using their vitality to keep his dead wife alive. And then the second plot is, taking a wrong turn, travellers find themselves trapped in a mysterious house. One horror after another threatens them as a sorcerer who lives within tries to sacrifice their eternal life for his beautiful bride. And you can start to notice that you try and put these two plots together. There really isn't much of a plot here. Um, it's just a whole bunch of shit that puts together with it happens to be just, right, there's a plot here somewhere. Oh, now there's a sorcerer. Oh, wait. Oh, actually, there's a wife thing now. Oh, wait. Now there's deadites. Oh, wait. There are weird, there's weird sea monster things. Oh, wait. There's this thing. Oh, like a merman type of thing. Oh, the merman. The, merman. the fucking merman. Maybe this was like the, the plot for The Cabin in the Woods before that actually got made they took inspiration from spookies <laughs> like how many different creatures yeah. can we get and they got it in the they got all those creatures in the film let's get all these creatures in one scene they just wanted to, <laughs> to beat spookies basically yeah yeah uh, i i kind of got the feeling that that was the case really it's uh it, the only thing missing from this movie to a mad to made a complete reference would have been a unicorn but uh <laughs> that would have been something of no. completed it all right so um so any so basically you guys then um let's let, let's go through some of the beats so first of all how does this movie technically start a little boy runs away from home and yeah, uh, he's got like a little box of cocaine at first but they're actually 
snowballs. <laughs> he opens it like it's a thing of cocaine. Oh, yeah. And then Happy coconut. birthday, Billy. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah. So the 13-year-old kid just runs out of nowhere. And for the, uh, for the first time, you're not entirely sure why he's running away or why he's there or what's the point of it. And actually, once you think about the whole movie, it's like, well, what's the point of half this shit anyway? So this is where you're first introduced to the hard cuts. We need to talk about the editing here. We kind of need to talk about the editing of the whole movie here. There are some incredibly hard left turn cuts in this entire yeah. movie. Um, like uh, one good example is you have the kid who's like walking. He, he's a thirteen year old boy. He's walking around. He's lost in the forest. He's going like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. He's hiding behind a tree. And he's looking all mopey. And then he just does a hard turn. And then you cut to the old movie with these people driving down the road as if it's like, oh, I'm just around the corner. From these mysterious people, these really these asshole people who are driving, real weird mix of people as well. Yeah, I don't understand why mix. they how what? they know each other. What? Yes. <laughs> okay, so can okay. I just comment on what was what was the name of the the like jock type character? Duke. 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 Yeah. Can I yeah. just comment on what he was wearing? Because he was wearing some sort of bodysuit that looked like a bin bag that had yes! a diagonal zip going down it. <laughs> He looked Only like a Power Ranger and a gigolo. Be... Cool. <laughs> and it's weird how like no one else is dressed like that. Cat. No one else. I know, right? He, yeah, it's yeah. Ed, you were saying like it's um, he, it's amazing he's supposed to be the jock when he looks like the weirdest fashionista <laughs> in that entire thing. Also, can we can I mention right? You you mentioned like how do these people know each other? I don't have a clue because they're all so fucking different. And one person looks like their dad. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought yeah. it was one of their dads. In my notes, Initially. he's like dad guy. Yeah, I couldn't remember yeah. his name, so he's dad guy. <laughs> yeah, because he looks at least 15 years older than everyone else, but they're supposed to be all together. In fact, at one point, I think one of the kids said, like, I'm sorry, kids. It's like, stop it. It's so weird. So, you got, so basically, you have a, an old guy who looks like a dentist. You have Duke who's wearing a bin bag. You have my favorite person of all time, the guy with the puppet. Oh, I, I found him really annoying. I love him. Uh, yeah, yeah, when he's yeah. introduced, he's like this. Man, I'm looking for another party. Me too. <laughs> uh oh, Duke's mad now, Mook. <laughs> I hate him. He really annoys me. He's like, shut no. up, you puppet. No, no, no. Here's the thing. I am the complete opposite to you. I think this move. This movie was saved by the puppet, and I want a more puppet guy. Because... He's got a T-shirt on. On his T-shirt is him and the puppet. On his yes! t-shirt. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? He's self-promoting himself on the puppet. It's great. Um, it's 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 purely it's, it's it looks out of all the characters, he looks like he's walked out of a completely different movie. Like he just walked on set from a different film and said <laughs> and said like, oh shit, now I'm in a horror movie. Fuck. Um, he's like but... a children's TV <laughs> presenter from the nineties, though, isn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. So you got that guy. You then got the British bitch. You can tell she's a British bitch because she's totally speaking in this manner and it's being an really absolute cow. Well. It's supposed to be English, but I don't know what that was. <laughs> Aristocratic? Yeah. Like, where are and the and goddamn her, keys? Her... <laughs> <laughs> and her husband's got, like, perfectly angular hair. His hair's been, like, <laughs> just hairsprayed into this brick brick shape on his head lego who, hair who i'm no, no offense to the guy but i would I, I had no idea they were a couple for the longest time in the movie because i kind of just thought that they were just they were just different so different one's a sort of flamboyant queen and then you got the british bitch so you have absolutely no idea he's he's my favorite i've got some clips of him but i'll, I'll play them when we get to those bits all right so you got them and then you've just got <laughs> and, then, and then, then you've got just two other random people. And then you've got Carol, who is quiet and moody for hot, most of the movie. And, uh, like, it's quiet and moody at the beginning. We don't even know what her deal is. Until later on, where she's somehow a, a, an expert in all things supernatural without any explanation. Yeah. yeah. Is she that the girl, the woman who looked a bit like, you know, the one from Robocop? Um, a little bit. Yeah, the one with the bigger, poofier hair. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it was like Carol, Murphy's okay. partner. Yeah, yeah. Cameron. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I don't remember any of these people's names, and I, honestly, I don't care. Um... <laughs> Why do you think I wrote them down? It's like Dad Guy and like stuff like that. Dad Guy, Guy in Bin Liner. I did remember Duke though. <laughs> remember... Yeah, but everyone remembers Duke because he was the he's he's because he's wearing a bin bag the entire time and thinking shiny it's fashion. nylon top and nylon tra- same material for his trousers as well it's just amazing yeah. 
It's so he's brilliant. Very, he's very white, white clean. That guy. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, I, 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 I was, I was going to actually make a joke on it, and I'll fucking say it. Basically, he's wearing a bin liner. He's a trash person, really, and he is a trash person because he's an absolute bastard. So his hey. outfit matches. Yeah. Uh, he sounds like one of the T birds from Greece or something. Yeah. <laughs> Again, walked out from a different movie. All these people are from, from from different movies. I'm convinced that the original script, which I'm very curious by, must have been like this is a meta narrative. This is the in joke that all these people are not supposed to be friends. These are all stereotypes from horror movies, and that all of them should be slaughtered in horrible ways. But when you try, when you don't explain that, it just looks like these people randomly met and now are forced into the situation by gunpoint. <laughs> to just get this done the characters are very like um uh friday the 13th type characters Mm. i think like in those sequels the friday the 13th sequels like the bad ones like they're they're the types of characters that are in this movie it's very similar yeah (laughs) definitely so back to the boy (laughs) so okay so the 13 year old boy takes out what looks like cocaine thank you luke now i can't think of it other than cocaine um even if it's a little knife like a little like he's about to test sample the goods. <laughs> he's got a long finger now. <laughs> yeah. A really long finger now. Happy so. birthday, Billy. <laughs> what what a fantastic 13-year-old for present for a 13-year-old. It's like, just here, have some cocaine. You need it. Um, actually, I wouldn't need it for this movie because then suddenly, out of the blue, there's this weird guy in the trees. Yeah. Hmm. And, yeah, <laughs> just chilling in the trees. Yeah. Say what? Yeah, and 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 and, and, he, and I and I thought at the beginning when watching this, uh, I thought at the beginning is like, right, this guy's gonna be bad, right? This guy's gonna be a bad guy because he's just being really stalky and creepy. It's like, what? It's like, what is a boy like you doing in the woods like this? Like I was thinking, where's the van? Like where's the van? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I think he was supposed to be a cool like rebel type guy, wasn't he? That's no, what the he film was, just... was going for. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and I, I, I know he's such a cool that, rebel. <laughs> <laughs> he's so cool. He, he he just hangs around in trees and shit because he's that cool. No, but uh, these wait, filmmakers you don't know what why. cool is. I, I I think yeah, I think these filmmakers have absolutely no idea what cool is. So they they they're just coolish guy trying to be a rebel, talking to a thirteen year old and trying. I'm not sure whether to scare him, intimidate him, or lure him into his car. I don't know what the situation it came was. across. It came across as the latter to me. I didn't once think this guy was creepy. Well, I just thought he was definitely a. Uh, potential nonce yeah well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, he says some weird stuff to the boy and saying like saying it's like, it's like um, I love the fact with the kids the kids in denial at the one point he goes over to him and sell, and, and I think uh, he's saying like how old are you and he says 13 and he goes you liar like says, okay <laughs> like you know this shit I am honest I love the one okay very quickly can we talk about the acting of the boy I thought I recognised this boy, but then yeah. I kind of looked at what else he'd been in, and he hadn't been in anything else. He reminded me of a kid I've definitely seen in a film like this, but no, I was mistaken. Well, he's quite generic, though, isn't he? Generic 80s generic. kid. Yeah, 80s yeah, boy. definitely. Um, he's, he's generic active. 80s kid. <laughs> he's he's basically uh, a Trumps. He's basically like something you'd find like in Top Trumps, and say, like, a generic 80s boy. Here you go. Totally tr- working. Um, he... His acting is appalling, and I don't know whether I love it or hate it. I don't know. I think when you get those kind of kids in these movies, they all they all act that same generic way. I'm, it reminded me of the kid from Phantasm. Like he's the similar <laughs> yeah, sort of yeah, uh, no. level of mm. training, I imagine. <laughs> so basically, level of wood, because this is there's five levels of wood here, and this is proper oak quality wood here this is how wooden his acting was it was hilarious um i do like that he had an action plan like a life plan though i don't know what it was <laughs> he's, he's like, like i've got, got a plan plans oh yeah yeah well the best go going because i've got i've got a big night ahead of me or something i wonder where, where he, i thought he was going to be in on it i thought Cocaine. he was going to be i actually thought oh there could be a big twist <laughs> i wonder yeah i wonder if nah. he's going to be the paul daniels guy like, I wonder if, like, uh, there'd be two timelines going on here. But it wasn't quite as intricately plotted out. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> so I, don't, imagine. I was confused. Did he turn up later in a different form, that kid? Or was that just a complete different kid? I, I'd be honest. Um, I sat there thinking about this, actually. And yeah. I would like to think for continuity's sake that, yes, it is. 
But I'm also remembering what this movie was that and continuity doesn't exist. So I think no, I don't think I think the kid just got buried and died, um, <laughs> which uh, introduces us to one of my favorite characters in the whole movie, because it makes it's it's this is the character that's the bridge gap between both films. Uh, between yeah. the old film and the new film. And this is the weird cat man with a hook hand. I, he looked like a cross between Nightcrawler from the X-Men mm. and, you know, the boyfriend from the royal family. <laughs> 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 we just, can we talk about his outfit as well? So he's wearing like a ruffled shirt, a gold, a gold like waistcoat. Yeah. Is he, what kind of boots was he wearing? He's wearing like he cowboy like a boots. wedding or... DJ. Who's got a bit off? Spurs. <laughs> oh yeah, he had Spurs. Yeah, he's, he had a. He, he was a gold waistcoat. He, he kind of like a bit like McLovin. Have you seen? Yeah. McLovin. Yes. <laughs> kind of had that outfit. <laughs> he had that kind of vibe going, going on? on. I love that. I and he kind of just he did the same thing the whole film, which yeah. is kind of just skulk around, skulk around like that, and that that was it. That was all he did. The majority of the. The majority of the movie, yeah, it was us, and this is, and you can kind of see this is where the hard cut's in, and this is how they're trying to make both movies merge together by literally having him. And this happens a lot in the movie. He would just be walking around, peeking through a bush, or hiding behind a door, creaking as if he's looking at the previous movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it makes yeah, him look like oh, he was there the whole time. Yeah. And now you can tell, obviously, they had lots of footage of him just creeping around. They just got spliced in here and there, like. <laughs> It's everywhere. It's like saying, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining how many hours of footage is just this guy walking around saying, now hide behind the door, hold the door, appear for a bush, just do this for a while. Just in all the different locations in the house, just say, like, you, my sir, you, my friend, are going to be the glue that saves this movie. <laughs> why did he, why did he bury the kid? Because, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, so he could become part of like the, monsters in the house and stuff just but like, we never oh, see yeah. him again if i don't if we never see him he, again so he just if he sat the up at off. the end if he sat up at the end as one of the zombies which i'm assuming he didn't right yeah. i don't think he I, did no no he never did so basically just they just basically this cat person first kills off the cool guy in a hilarious way because he suddenly just falls off screen i had no idea what happened and then he's just dead and then he's and then the boy gets chased by this cat man falls into a hole and gets buried alive that's that's it, and that's the end of the boy arc. The thirteen-year-old boy is dead. The arc is gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's great though. Great like, it is, you know, it's supposed to be a really sin. It was a sinister sort of scene when the cat guy was like killing off the boy, but the music was kind of like this. <laughs> Up, 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 up. It, it sounds like it sounds like a it sounds like really bad like the uh it sounds it sounds like really bad like Resident Evil music. <laughs> Do you know what it reminds me of? B-side. It's like horror Seinfeld or something. <laughs> <laughs> like the bass in Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slap bass. <laughs> when he right. was burying the kid as well, there were so many cuts back and forth between him burying him yeah, <laughs> and like, yeah. the kid just. There were about a hundred cuts back and forth between that. <laughs> just so you wanted to see right? every moment. Yeah, it was quite a nasty scene. I, I feel sorry for the boy. I feel really sorry for the boy because he is totally. You can see dirt's actually falling on him, and he's not comfortable. And the and I can just imagine the the, the new director Eugene just sort of creeping going, Yes, yes, keep burying the boy. Yes, you do fine. Stay there. Ramble. Yeah. Like get, I almost get walking. I can't breathe. No, it's fine. We need more. Put more dirt on the boy. <laughs> right. And then that's the end of the boy arc, which, you, you know, and that's, oh, and that's literally the first five minutes of the movie. Just this random death that has no payoff, no nothing, and then gets killed off. We then, we then go back to where the, they finally all go to the house, the guys driving the car. But there's a, they, they get to the house, they look at the house, they go in, and like like most people, like it felt like a Scooby Doo episode here. They just walk in. Yeah, yeah. They're just like dead intrigued by it, aren't they? Because they're, they're like party people. They want to like find the next party, don't they? They do. It's Duke saying, "I just want to go out and party," and everyone's saying, "Where are you going?" And I'm actually sitting there thinking, "Yeah, where the fuck are you going? If you didn't find the house, where would you be driving to?" Yeah. I mean, you'd only be going to party in that outfit. <laughs> That is totally a party outfit. Maybe, maybe they're doggers. That... You don't go to the post office. 
Is that it would make sense if they were doggers. That's why they don't look like they belong in the same friendship yeah. circle. So basically, the, online, group the plot, the, 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 the synopsis is that basically Duke and Duke and the puppet guy got too rowdy at their previous house party and they all left. Maybe you're right. Maybe this was, that was a swingers party and they're mm. just saying, right, we'll just, you know, we, we, we've already got each other's keys so we might as well just get into the car and just find another place to bang. What happened? What happened was Duke was waiting outside the previous house, and uh, yeah. but then the bin van came past and just thought, "Hang on a minute," <laughs> chucked him in the back. And he got crushed. <laughs> oh no! A, a worthy end to a shitty trash person. Um, <laughs> they're all so, like very familiar with each other, though, aren't they? They're all familiar, well, and you and can't not be familiar what... with someone you've been fucking. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is true. You have to get to know them before you before you shove something up one of their holes. So. Uh, <laughs> You've got to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Once they get into the house, there's one thing that says, like, as the, the I think the girlfriend of the older dentist-looking guy says, like, I've known these people for years. And I'm sitting there going, no, you don't. <laughs> these people are yeah. too different and too weird to you to properly consider them all close friends of yours. And they all, like, hate each other as well. So, like, there's nothing to comes across as them being mitty because they all seem to absolutely hate each other yeah like the 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 two different they're way too much polar opposites for them to do that especially the puppet guy who the fuck knows this guy and said oh he's perfectly fine we're gonna bring him everywhere yeah Yeah. the only ones that get on are you know the dad guy and his other half yeah who's a lot younger than him actually player i thought maybe (laughs) player (laughs) definite swingers definite swingers Okay, so I think we're establishing that they were basically a swingers party. They just got a little bit in the way. And now they're just like, we need another place. Ooh, this 24-roomed house would be perfect to bang all over. Yeah, I like, um, so that as they're exploring the house, uh, Duke finds a locked door, so he smashes it with a chair. <laughs> like, yes! <in> seconds. <laughs> That's the first thing he does. It's like, oh, this door won't open. <laughs> Bang! Breaks it in. There's a, just, a, there's a, just a void into the blackness. Okay. And then oh, yeah. a body falls out, holding a board and a vial. But it all happened at once. And the thing is, Duke Duke's reaction is, oh, he's not real. Poke it. <laughs> Stop poking it. <laughs> so, so basically, would that be your reaction? If you find a dead body, would the first thing to do is poke it? Because I've always been curious about if anyone would poke a dead body. Well, no. I mean, it doesn't look real. But I mean, that's because <laughs> it's not real. Uh, but I, I think my first thing would be to smell it, surely. <laughs> yeah. I think it was a more intimate thing than right. poking it. It's like, yeah, this definitely <laughs> smells like rotten eggs. Yeah. Ooh, got a nice musk though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So they do that, and this is then where we're properly introduced then to the other element in this whole thing, which is the wizard, warlock, magician thing. It's the weird guy. Paul Daniels. Yeah. He's like a <laughs> Paul Daniels. Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he kind of like wants to be like a Vincent Price type character, doesn't he? But he's not quite yeah. cool enough. <laughs> well, yeah, this whole yeah, this whole movie isn't cool enough for that. And you can just sort of see that he's he's just sitting there in his chair and he's talking to the cat man because apparently that's his butler or something. And he's going like, "Yes, they're all in the house now, and now they're all just gonna play my game of chess." And <laughs> Like, what this are seems you to be, on? He always, seems always, to be the only film this actor was in. Yeah, he's always well, well yeah, not surprised. He's always chiming in constantly. Whenever someone says something in our main group, like someone says nobody lives here, and then he says something in reply to them all the time. This time he said somebody does live here forever. That doesn't make sense. That's not a real sentence. <laughs> 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 it's so weird. Uh, th- you can clearly tell now that I've told you these are two movies in one. You can clearly tell that this is the new stuff. This yeah. is this is just the guy who's saying like, right, we need to we need to put some kind of narrative into this forty percent piece of trash. So right, what if we have a warlock? Yes, and he is omnipotent. Yes, and he can talk and be a exposition dump. Yes, and we can talk have him talk in riddles. Yes, and he now has a cat person as a butler. Yes, and he's got a <laughs> permanent frog in his throat. Like he never swallows it down. <laughs> it's, it's like a, well, it's like a shit Darth Vader, isn't it? Like drain pipe Darth Vader. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's it's got <laughs> <to> by <laughs> Darth Vader. Now, and, and this is the weird thing. So apparently, his plot line is he wants to he needs to kill all these people. So the more people he kills, the more energy he can use to revitalize and bring back his dead wife. Which okay, who isn't even that into him? I oh, know you again. I've already dead once, <laughs> and now I've got to wake up and start this marriage all over again. Give it I, a rest. The da- the dialogue there is fantastic. Um, Ed, I've got a clip any, of that. Yeah, can you play a clip of the dialogue sequence between these two? I have waited by your side day and night for an entire lifetime. Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from me. I like I like <laughs> that music. It's nice. But you, you you see now as if we can never be separated. Why is he German? <laughs> Why is he German? I love oh. her voice in that bit. They're like, no, stay away. <laughs> oh, God. Dead moment. Hey, imagine that, though. Leaving imagine you've been him. waiting by someone's bedside day and night, waiting for them to wake up, and then they just woke up and went, stay away. <laughs> you ungrateful bitch. <laughs> 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 it's so weird. It's brilliant because he's just because she lit the response is like you need to let me go, let me die. And I think the reason is because I think she I think she has maybe been like in this magical coma for like seventy years or something, and then wakes up and then you woken up to like you were handsome once. It just looks up going, God, you're fugly. I don't want to let me die. I don't want to be associated with you. Oh, good grief. <laughs> So that's a that's a whole different kettle of fish, Jesus. Mm. All right, so that's all happening. So basically, the wife is the wife's trying to be slowly revitalized by having all these killer things, and then uh, while this is happening, we get the Ouija board thing. So yeah, like Duke finds it, doesn't he? Yeah, Duke finds the weird Ouija board thing, which I personally find bizarre because it's not really a Ouija board because we know. Have, have any of you actually ever played with a Ouija board? No. No. no? No. Uh, I love how everyone's going like no because if they say yes they think they might be haunted. Um, I have had a go at a... <laughs> it's like say no 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 I haven't no I haven't played with the dead no I've I've, I've 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 never played with one but I've seen plenty of Ouija boards and I've seen people and I've seen uh, and I've seen like I had a little touch on it and go Ooh, you know but um, it doesn't look like this this is a totally weird ass different sort of thing with with a really like cool. Said- they sent the props guy to get a Ouija board and he'd gone, well, I don't know what that is. Goes, Just go and find one. You can find one. He came back with, like, mousetrap or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this it's is a... it, right? Is this it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we call a Ouija board. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfectly fine. With this really cool, like, little thing that looks like a, it looks like it's got a skull on it and it looks like a claw and that's the thing that's been moved around in, that kind of thing. Um, Do you remember what uh, Duke said about it? No, what did Duke say? Go on, play it pretty goddamn weird if you ask me what is it art or something <laughs> what is it <laughs> art or something oh it's oh it's definitely some kind of art um some kind of art or something it's proper weird man <laughs> the, dude let me just fill up my quap and sort out my fucking garbage outfit <laughs> jesus christ um so when this happens everyone's looking confused obviously there's a dead body just falling out of the closet and there is an, and some kind of Ouija board appeared up. And everyone's saying, what the fuck is it? Carol comes out of fucking nowhere and starts talking like she has been an expert at the supernatural forever. Even though we've never been properly introduced or know that she's actually an es- expert on Ouija boards and ghosts and demons. Yeah, she loves it. She's really into it all, isn't she? Yeah. It, it's, I personally find that quite funny because there's just moments where you saw her sitting there and she's just talking. And she a full exposition dump trying to explain what the fuck this Ouija board is. And then she says, like, well, does anyone know how to use it? The puppet guy gives it a go and doesn't know what to do with it. <laughs> He's using the puppet hand, I think. And just... She says um, it's to communicate. It's a communicator. And the, the camp guy is like this. Communication with the dead. <laughs> Communication oh, with who? <laughs> oh, I love it. No, and, and then so the British sass British. in his voice. No, but then the British bitch says something afterwards. It's like, communicate with who? Is it like, with the dead? And it's like, the dead, but they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> what? That is. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, fantastic. It's a good what point. a line. It's a good, it's good point. It's a good point. It's like, why you want to talk to the dead? They're dead. It's like, yeah, but that's the point of. Anyway, okay. Um, <laughs> you see, when you start adding logic to movies like this that don't have any logic, your head hurts. Um, but as you wait. said, the puppet guy. I've got, yeah. I've got, I've got too many clips for this section. But the puppet guy. Yeah. Chili beanie, the spirits are about to speak. 
Are they friendly spirits? Mine. <laughs> 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 this is another annoying example. I've got a few examples of him, but like, yeah, he's just, he just irritates me. Has his puppet voice got a lisp? Yes. <laughs> so he does. Yes. I love it. I, I, thing is, I want a movie about that guy. I, I want a movie entirely about the puppet guy. That's all I want. I want to know his backstory. I want to know what, what, what what's with the puppet. I want to know if he's always like this or does he have a tender soul. I want to know more about puppet guy. He is, there's something there that everyone else doesn't have. Which if I'm you just knew more... somebody, if you knew somebody who was like that, you'd just be like, "Oh, just give it a rest, honestly. Just for one day, can we just do something and you not bring the puppet along?" Why is the puppet everywhere? Is, is, think, is... you know the T-shirt he's got? Do you think that's like merch or whether he's just <laughs> had that one night? <laughs> so promoting. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> Oh god, brilliant! So all right, so once that's happened, he's um, done the whole thing, and he's uh, they're all doing that. Carol gets on, and then suddenly she just becomes a deadite. Like she just becomes a full blown deadite by this point. Yeah, mm. within a second, right? Like there's no yeah. sort of halfway point. She's like a drop banana. She just goes bad. <laughs> <laughs> just boosh! Like from here to here, now officially a deadite, yeah. and starts attempting to kill them, but doing pretty badly at it. Like uh, throwing the Ouija board at Puppet Guy and all that kind of stuff. And that is when it gets to the point where you're noticing, for no reason, like, it wasn't really a proper summoning. Like, she only just touched it once and now she's a deadite. And then and then the zombies come out outside with some really cool zombie-looking effects. Yeah, mm. one guy's got his eye, like, it's like on a spring or something sticking out of his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the close-ups are really good, like, when you saw yeah. like, little details like that. Yeah. yeah. So you can see the original budget with the gore stuff. Like you can say, like, yeah, okay, the gore stuff was going to be cool. Like you can see that. This is when the introduced. This is the first time I've said, oh, okay, the gore is going to be interesting now because there was nothing like that before. Yeah. Um, and because the zombies are outside now, again, this is the thing. Everyone seems to be experts because at one point it's like saying, well, look, it's like, okay, they close the door. It's like they look like the zombies won't be coming in. How do you know this? Yeah, that was Dad Guy, wasn't it? He yeah, goes, Dad, Dad Guy expert. says this. Those things aren't going to let us out of here. You still want to go out there? So what the hell are we going to do? Just stand here and wait for them to break in and murder us, huh? I don't think those things can get in here. You're right. <laughs> you're right. Immediate, you're right. <laughs> But yeah, he's so point. calm the whole time. He can't do, like, hysterical, can he? Calm dad. He's like this calm dad guy. Well, because he's the dad. He, he's the only parent in the, <laughs> a bunch of these people, clearly. <laughs> so Everyone has been screaming outside before that point. And then he's yeah. just like, they can't get in here. Yeah, it's like, well, you know, because he, again, he's suddenly an expert on zombies now. <laughs> so, right. The rest of the time, now they're finally split up. Okay, they decide to split up and look for clues, basically, just like every other haunted house. And now we get to, well, this is the bit I'm finally wanting to start talking about. All the monsters in this movie! Yeah. Yeah. Right, this is when so, it gets really interesting. This week, yeah. it would be, make a good music video, this film. You know, you sort of just have the sort of the course of happening during the music. Or even like in the back, like on a bar, they just had the sort of the, the monster scenes playing on the background behind the bar. Yeah, yeah this work. would be a good one for that, like yeah. the background, like because the visuals are really good. Yeah, yeah. Because mm. out of context, if you had individual scenes, you can see that oh, they're pretty decent. Each individual monster, mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool on their own. They work, but in connection to all this and the hard cutting and jumping between another movie that doesn't make any sense and blah blah blah, it's kind of semi ruined. So, what's your f okay? So there's loads of monsters. So let's go through. Let's go around the room. Let's go around the room, children, and talk about which one. What's your favourite monster in this in this series? Then, so what's the favourite monster uh, that appeared? I thought there was an obvious one, but I don't think there is. There's a couple that I really liked. So, do you want to share one, Luke? I'll I'll leave the more obvious ones to you guys, and I'm going to go with uh, the the Halloween costume Grim Reaper guy. <laughs> yeah, who, who, ex who explodes? It's like every generic like <laughs> Grim Reaper like. Some... Halloween, sort of the cheapest Halloween costume of yeah. Grim Reaper. It's, it's got the bright, glowing art, red eyes and yeah. everything. It's got amazing. A, his side is pretty nasty. Like he, he hits the table, it goes right into it. But he, he obviously just looks like a guy in a suit because he's yeah. like slamming this thing and he's supposed to be sort of floating around. But mm. some somehow they, they end up on the roof and yes. he chucks the Grim Reaper off the roof and he explodes when he hits the ground. 
<laughs> the explosion was beautiful. It's li- literally this loud. <laughs> like, Jesus. It's like, the Grim... I mean, if he's the Grim Reaper, obviously you can't kill the Grim Reaper. But clearly, this is what happened. Just before, I think, just before the Grim Reaper touched the ground, he just appeared, just appeared into a puff of smoke, and that's what the explosion is. Like, aha! Yeah. It's almost like they, they had some, like, pyro they could use. So, like, yeah. well, we've got to use it for something. They just had this really epic explosion for that <laughs> death guy. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, the, the Grim Reaper was kind of awesome. Yeah, that's a good in. Um, the next, okay, so Ben, how about you? Um, I don't reckon anything beats the farty, dusty men for me because they were uh, <laughs> delightful. My favorite too. Oh. Particularly because the, it, they've got a fight sequence with Duke and you can see like all his outfit from different different angles. Do you see, a bit, of, do you see a bit of crack? Man. I think you see a bit of crack, right? Like, he bends over at one point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, these cool. dusty fart men they're awful as well because he over at one point he overpowers two of them and just pushes them away like that <laughs> like the putties from Power Rangers but yes I was totally farties. thinking that but just fartier which I don't understand why the farts though why were they farting was that added in Potty post man. do you reckon, do you reckon? Yeah, I, I think, someone I just think... went hang on a minute do you not know really be good if they were farting I'll know I think the scene's fine add a few farts into this scene and tell me if it doesn't improve it <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, I mean, right, it does. Actually, actually oh, actually, I've been, I've been actually able to find uh, a factoid about that. I just found it now. Brilliant. So, the farting was done in post production. So, post production, but one when spookies were actually being made. So, this wasn't the original thing from Twisted Souls. They weren't meant to be farty, right? But they put the farts in in order to make the scene seem a bit more comical and so it is no longer so it seems less violent when they melt it that wasn't the soundboard sorry that was a uh, oh, sorry that was me board. i was like is that one of the farts from the soundboard i was, <laughs> oh, that was... did i remember <laughs> no that was me i'm so sorry i have got a clip of this scene actually i'll play in a minute but do no it. <laughs> do it <laughs> do it Go on. play the... play it Maybe there's some way out of here. Maybe through some secret wall. He's <laughs> getting flashbacks of my the- granddad it's walking into the room. The- <laughs> it's got like a belly rumbling noise as well, isn't it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> These guys are hungry and farty, and they're ready to go after you. Yeah. Um, I love the, the I... kid. Kid in me that appeals to me every time I hear it. It's like I'm just like laughing at fart jokes. Yeah. It's just like, I, it's it's appeal, it wins every time. But you can clearly see, like, in the original cut, I don't think they were meant to be farty. And obviously, it's explained that they tried to use it, so therefore they can get, uh, instead of getting, like, so basically the sort of the rating afterwards wouldn't be so harsh, because it's like, yeah, but, yeah, there's loads of weird gore effects, but these guys are farty. So you can't make it an X. It could be R-rated. There's farts in it. Um, (laughs) I didn't think they were that, that, that scene was that violent, though. Exactly. It's such a weird creative choice. But then um, and then and and then those guys are killed by literally just throwing wine at them and having them melt. Yeah, Yeah. that's strange. So they use an axe to like cut a hole in the big wine barrel and that just melts these guys. But why do they even think of that as an idea? They're being attacked by these farty dusty monsters. You're thinking red wine. That's their secret weakness. I, I think it's because Duke literally does an uppercut to one of these farty minor zombie things and he lands in a puddle and he notices that one's a bit steamy uh, and he sits there yeah, going like water it must be water get the wine <laughs> Just yeah. a- and a flood like this the- these barrels must had no had so much pressure in them because they just <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah um so yeah th- that one's a good one i like that one ed your favorite monster well mine was the uh Oh, I like the farting zombies, but I also like Merman as well. The Merman. Okay. So like the fish, the... weird fish guy. That he just seems like really out of place because obviously he would only be really sort of dangerous in water, but he's out of water and he's kind of like yeah. flapping around on the ground. 
these are the ones, like you mentioned before, that look like Boglins because they are just so weird and makes no sense. Um, so the British guy, the, the, the British bitch and the uh, posh and the weird flamboyant boyfriend guy thing with the sarcasm the size of up to here gets slowly devoured by these weird mermen. <laughs> um, yeah, the fight yeah. sequence was interesting. Uh, the, fight scene, the fight sequence was interesting. Where they're just struggling, and she, and she's like, "Oh no, eh, eh. there's a there's a piercing sort of one pierces one gut, one of the mermen, like, eh, and then and then drops an entire bookshelf on the other, and just starts stamping on it, going, "Why don't you die?" I'm struggling to remember how she dies now because they look, she gets away from the Boglins, doesn't she? She does, yeah. and then and she has this... her face melted, doesn't she? Ah, by the by the Queen Boglin. Uh, yes, tail. by the by the Queen <laughs> the Boglin with, with yeah, tentacles. Yeah. She gets very wounded though, doesn't she? She's almost like bleeding out, pretty much. Yeah, she's yeah. like really only just gets away. But my favorite bit of those that kind of scene is where like the um, the sassy guy is yeah. like he starts drinking, and she says like, uh, "Oh, you you, <laughs> you don't drink," and uh, he basically wants to get drunk anyway. And he, 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 they, they, they say this, like, I'll, I'll just play it. Go for it. David, throw that crap away. Why? Because you say so? Because you don't drink, you asshole. <laughs> and you're only getting sick. God knows he's touched you. I don't give a damn, honey! <laughs> <laughs> and then, that's I love my favorite line of his i don't give a damn honey and and and, and i love it because he went, went the moment she he takes a swig he just spits it out immediately he's like oh. <laughs> <laughs> flavors i've never touched alcohol in my life um and the, the, the way the way, the way he she dies as well like going back to british bitch she gets killed off because she sees a ghost or some kind of apparition of the fanboy and boyfriend who's now dead and says like come join us it's like basically come join us to the dark side we have cookies you know and um suddenly gets killed by queen boglin with really kind of cool looking stop motion tentacles with lightning powers yeah that's yeah. right and her face melts <laughs> um which scene. is brilliant but the first yeah. it's the first time we've seen like this this kind of claymation effect so i was so confused when i first saw it yeah. i really like that it's included in films though it's something you yeah. don't really see nowadays is it? they had a lot of that in evil dead didn't they evil yeah dead. yeah and you can see that this is basically what they're trying to do they're trying to emulate evil dead here mm -hmm. with like the weird face melting i don't get it but it adds a it. lot of charm because it's kind of like it's funny rather than scary isn't it like, there was, yeah. um, <clears throat> there's another monster that really had no effect on the film at all um she was like a little uh, puppet, um, you know the, the old puppet TV show, the satirical thing with Maggie Thatcher and that. It looked like <laughs> yeah, one of those spitting image. Yeah, yeah, it looked like one of those yeah. spitting image uh, things. It was like a evil <laughs> laughing little bride thing, which like knocks... a witch, like a witchy type character, wasn't it? Like, she, like it looked like yeah. yeah. She knocked she knocked the bride out and yes. then brought her back to life and then just flew off. I won't tell, tell you what she was doing. But she looked cool. Laughing yeah, she way. looked she looked cool because she had the stretch out face. It's very Evil Deadish at some points. It's got like and like, mm. but you can see that you can clearly see that was a puppet. Like you clearly see that was just a puppet, no effort, and just knocks the knocks the bride down, who's escaping from the evil warlock, and just flies away. Really cool looking, but makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also reminded me of uh, like a bad baddie from Terror Hawks. Remember Terror Hawks? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Terror oh, Hawks was like uh, one of the Jerry Anderson ones, wasn't it? Mm. Like not like... one of the most popular, but it was a really scary villain characters in that. It was like really, like really frightened me as a kid. Yeah, oh, it's been ages. I've seen Terror Hawks. Terror but yeah. Hawks. Uh, okay, so my favorite. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, you saw look at. Oh yeah, I know, I know this now. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Um, okay, my favourite has to be the Spider Queen because, again, makes absolutely no sense why there's a Spider Queen there, but she is definitely the best-looking effect in the entire movie. She's I, scary, and her transition it, of like yeah. going into the spider is awesome. It's I really, really like it. They could have made a film based entirely just on this monster, and I would yes. have watched it and enjoyed it. 
And I think, honestly, if they stuck the... If, if the original guys wanted to, they could have just picked one monster and made an entire movie out of it. Like, mm. you could you could have made an entire movie with the farting miners, or you could do an entire movie with, like, the Spider Queen or whatever it is. You could do a whole movie on one of them, but it said, no, let's have them all. They got too greedy and too big for their britches, and this is what happens. Um... My dear, a whole movie of the farting got zombies. That's a, it's stretching that joke. A bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be he, sick of it after ten minutes. All right, all right. I'm having a, okay. I'm sort of having the thought of thinking, like, saying, "Well, what do we do? Okay, okay. Not only do they fart, they vomit now. Yeah, they vomit. Uh, they piss. They shit. They just do all the different kind of bodily functions that you can do." Um, but yeah, Spider Queen, brilliant thing. She gets transformed. All the arms come out. She attacks the puppet guy and just eats him, basically. The, the, him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, is, that was weird. It's because I, lo- I love the he fact like that. He pops, doesn't he? It's really, he like pops yeah. and deflates like a <laughs> balloon. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> It's it's, it, 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 it's it's like when you used to have one of those like cans of juice as a kid and just suck it in. <laughs> basically, that what that was. It was brilliant. Yeah. Um. And yeah, and like I said, that was a, that bit is a bit that I'm going to constantly remember. It's that little part. That he, gets, part. he gets stuck to it. He gets stuck to like a spider web as well. <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, it's true because the spider web bit's just like eh, eh. like she's, he's not really trying. Like no offense, buddy. Yeah. Like you could put more effort he into got, it. He could have got away. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he just looks a little bit worried as well. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's really gonna get like you know eaten. <laughs> he's yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah. no. Oh, what are you going to do? Oh, go on then. Are you going to deflate me, are you? <laughs> you are? Deflate me, are you? Yeah, let's see what you can do. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So um, then this leads to sort of what I believe would was the original ending of Twisted Souls, which is suddenly they find Carol, the ones who are alive, which is the uh, – uh, the uh, the the girlfriend of Duke and the original and the older couple with the old guy and everything else, right? And they find Carol, who now becomes fully possessed by something, and then her brain sort of explodes and emits mm. old people rays. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's correct. She's being controlled by the uh, <laughs> that's by the guy. What? She's being controlled by the attic, like the attic guy. The guy in the attic is like talking through her all the time. Is that where he is? The attic? I thought he was in the basement for some reason. We we have no idea where this happened. (laughs) We have no idea where he's hiding. It's just in the next room over. There's no indication to say it was in the attic. I just. No, no, but uh, uh, this is you putting logic into this movie. Okay, it has to be the attic because they've never been to the attic. Mm. So we're going to make it the attic. Fine, whatever. They're right, they're in the attic. (laughs) So, but the okay again. I just explained this. Old people raise. I had no idea that was even a a, a superpower. No, <laughs> just I'm going to emit old people rays on you. And the funny thing is, is now the the old guy actually looks his age. Um, yeah. <laughs> extra. Doesn't wrinkly. that kind of happen when? Doesn't something like that happen in, in Indiana Jones when they open the the uh, Lost Ark? When mm. it gives some stuff off, some people's like hair starts going grey, and that is that that? Maybe that's something else I'm thinking. Yeah. Of. No, 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 this, got that ben, vibe. This is you, Ben, putting logic again into this movie. It's just it's like <laughs> if you're ben. trying to think, you have to stop. <laughs> stop thinking that this makes sense. None of this makes sense. Yeah. You're going to hurt yourself when you start thinking. Oh, it's like that. No, it's if not. If you put, so, try to put too much logic into this film, you know that scene in this film where Paul Daniels is vain. is like erupting out of his head. <laughs> 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 Why was that even a thing? Well, it's like his... Uh, he was like Charles Xavier power, right? That's like his... <laughs> if you'd have just done that, if you just touch your head, that's all you need to do to show that you have that power. But no, you have to get the vein. You're like you need a neurofen. <laughs> <laughs> that one oh, little vein is just there. Like, <laughs> kind of brilliant. So yeah, and then... And and then what it looks like the old guy the the older guy finally gets the vial, throws the vial at the... at Carol... And she uh, and she explodes, and the Ouija board explodes, and that seemed to be the original ending. That the the free the, you know the the final three people survive. They survive the haunted house, and they would leave. But we never actually see them leave, do we? I no, I hadn't yeah. thought about that. Yeah, because yeah. really at that I point thought about the movie. Mo- <laughs> <laughs> True, but by that point, actually, the movie just cut- that their arc ends. Like, because cause now we're going back to the re- reincarnated wife thing again, who's running, who stabs the magician in the eye, which is awesome. 
I think in the eye or the forehead? Forehead. Is the forehead. forehead. forehead yeah. I've yeah, got a clip forehead. of that. Go it's on. cool. Okay. Tell me that you will love me. What about Bane? That you will love me <laughs> for all time. I will love you for all time. <laughs> I can't go over that guy's voice. <laughs> Sounds brilliant. It's awful. Um, so it's like the, Brian Pedonde, the... or whatever his name is. <laughs> what, 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 we don't. <laughs> like, do we care? Brian <laughs> Um So he. Um, so basically, she runs away from stabbing magi- from magician with by stabbing it by stabbing him in the forehead, and and runs out in outside the house where he's where she's now being completely tormented by all the zombies. And you can see that these are not the same zombies from the original one because they have weird blue body paint and you can actually see some of the extras don't haven't finished their full paint so some of their fingers are still regular skin color and yeah. stuff I, like I, that uh, quite like these scenes that these scenes are quite prevalent in like zombie movies around this yeah. this period where the sort of the 80s action beats kick in and then the zombies start erupting out of the ground and then mm. the woman's just running away from the, the massing horde it's very quite, thriller quite effective. bit, wouldn't it? Yeah, 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 it was some, yeah. yeah it's, it's very yeah. much like a. If, I, if I was looking at this going, this feels like the, it looks like these guys are all extras from the thriller video. Yeah. And um, she runs, she runs, she runs. Her dress mysteriously gets ripped off because, of course, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and yes! uh, that's what the director said. Like, before yes. the uh, before the chase, though, you get my favourite zombie, which is this one. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Like, ma- really frightening zombie. Like, mama. Because oh, there's a whole other character. Like her, ba- her child is in this film. Yeah. Yes. We completely missed. Because... I thought it was related to. I thought it was related to that in some way. So maybe the whole. Po- okay, now is us trying to figure out what their intentions were, which is going to hurt us really mentally. But I think basically then trying to fix this somehow is that. She was. She's the. She is being the bride. Obviously, you have the warlock, and so the warlock saying, "But we have new children now." So every time they kill someone and becomes a part in their grave, which was one thing. One one bit we completely missed. A guy gets killed off by literally fall, getting killed by the cat guy. I think it is, and sees his own grave come out of the ground. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's like all those zombies are like her sort of children. But how would they know that? I don't know. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> um, so if somehow all the zombies know that they're children, and then it's like, Mom, Mom, come back. And I'm, I'm imagining them actually all thinking, Mom, it's been 70 years, you owe me so many Christmas presents. Um, yeah. <laughs> so she finally starts to escape, finds a car randomly, which we thought I thought was the original car from the opening. No, it's a completely different car. Mm. Randomly, uh, she gets in, finds another random guy who happens to be parking there, and says, "Oh shit, zombies!" They, they drive away. Crooked, it? <laughs> yeah, which turns out to be, which later turns out, it says, "Oh, thank God, I've escaped." And uh, he says, "Like, but you can never escape. You know, I've always loved you." <laughs> and um, leads to the ending of that, which reveals that 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 little that little cute little hunk guy is actually the cat person with the hook hand the entire time. He's been. He's been... <laughs> a coma for like an old man in love with her and a bearcat man in love with her. Jeez, she must be. <laughs> well, just. I, I, What's I, going I, on? Uh, uh, while you're breaking up while you were doing that but also that just adds to the effect because p- pure and simply it shows how broken this ending was. Um, it so... reminds me about you were saying about Thriller earlier is another yeah. kind of Thriller moment is it like you know when Michael Jackson kind of turns around and goes like I'm not like other guys, kind of thing. Oh, yes. Like, she thinks she's safe with this guy in the car, and he turns around to be the cat man. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and okay, and then the movie actually sort of ends there. But there's one thing we haven't mentioned. Right at the very, very beginning, there is a pulsating grave that happens. I don't know, with no context, like we don't oh, yeah. understand it. Yeah. And then at the end, it turns out that the the magician has been in that grave the entire time and resurrects himself, but that doesn't work. Because he was in the attic, or is he dead? Whatever. Jump scare the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that was literally it, basically. And that was the movie. 
um, a whole bunch of shit happens. It gets very confusing and we don't know what's going on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You're right. It is a movie. It's, it's, it's an experience. <laughs> I, act, I would think it's an experience. If I was high on drugs, I would think this is amazing. If I was, um, if I had ADHD, this movie's perfect for me because there's loads of shit happening constantly. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd imagine, I should have had a big boy ciders when I was there. Uh... Watching it because that would have yeah. helped. Especially you, the yeah. farts bit, I would have been like hysterics. Oh my god, this is like... perfect. Are you, uh, you need to be drunk. I think you have a couple of big boy ciders having a chug down going, Yes, this movie's amazing. I was just thinking farting would totally help this movie right now. Cool. So to rate or to review the movie, um, it's a difficult one. I mean, we normally go from A to F. Do you guys want to join in and give it an A to F rating as well? Or... Sure. Okay, yeah. cool. Right, uh, yeah, do you want to do you want to take it first? What would you give? This? Is your this was your recommendation? So I'm imagining an A, all right? A, B, all so. right. Okay. Now, if if I'm if <laughs> I if I if I'm if I'm going to review it for pure unadulterated shit quality, it's an A. But as a movie itself, as a full movie itself, and an experience, and for people who've not into sort of trashy horror movies, um, and rubbish in general. I kind of would give this a D. Now, the reason why I give it a D is because there's some really cool horror effects, and some of the monsters are great, but there's loads of hard cutting, the movie's nonsensical, you're completely confused most of the time, and then it just fucking ends with no answers solved. So, yeah, I would give it a D. Yeah. Where are you, Ed? I was, uh, is, it, is it me? Yeah. 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 I would. I was gonna say D, but I'd probably even go a little bit lower, like a D minus. It's, it's, I, I just didn't like. I, <laughs> in terms of st- trashy movies, uh, there's so many more that are so like so much better. There's just there's just a few little bits that I liked in it, and uh, as I said at the beginning, it's kind of a bit of a slog really until it kicks off. Mm, so yeah, yeah I just yeah. didn't really find it that in, uh, overall that great. Mm. We need you. I think I go for. I think I go for a D as well. Um, just because of my like, it's a as I said, it was a roller coaster. Lots of ups, lots of downs in this film, but it's entertaining in, in a way. But it's also quite unnerving, and there's not much in terms of logic or coherent narrative. So yeah, I'll probably go for a D. Mm. Yeah, well, I was uh, struggling. I mean, I was leaning towards an E at one point, but mm. the, the latter half of the film has got a lot of fun. Uh, and like some of the effects, like the Spider Lady. In particular, so I, I believe like a B minus, I think. Um, but yeah, it was, it was worth a watch for sure. So basically, in terms of your ratings, that this movie's failed, but has a few promising moments. I mean, as a movie, it's a failure, sure. But <laughs> totally. it's, uh, but it, it, there are individual scenes and parts of the film that are very enjoyable. Okay, so um, that's the film. That's the reviews there. Um, do you guys uh, want to let people know how to keep up with you guys and what you guys are up to? Okay, Ed, do you want to break it down to what we're doing on the YouTube channels in a minute? Uh, yeah, so we've, we've got um, three YouTube channels. We've got the Trash Tapes uh, YouTube channel, our main channel, which has got um, like short films and cult and current uh, reviews and reactions. And then we've got our Enigmatic Play channel, which is all gaming as well. Mm-hmm. So we've got lots of stuff going on, on there at the moment. But you can access all of the channels via enigmatic productions and vice versa on the other channels um um yeah so do you want to talk about the podcast johan yep so uh with the trash tapes has been is now on every platform so it's very similar to where you find you guys if you type in the trash tapes on anywhere we're on things like buzzsprout we're on apple Podcasts, we're on spotify etc etc uh the recent episode as of recording this now uh there was there's been episodes like batman and robin which was fun to do uh we've done we did doom the tw- the 2005 version of the movie oh boy that was something uh and we've done things like star crash we've done things like miami connection so we're doing loads more there and the kind of reason again why we're doing this is because um spookies eventually might become a screening because i'm thinking that people need to see how fucking weird this movie is so uh eventually down the line once everyone's allowed out of their homes we might actually have a a wide screening so everyone can also feel this horrendous torture so yeah that's very cool i will say to the listeners go and check out um all of the enigmatic youtube stuff because you guys put a lot of effort into like the production like this the the, the Mm. dressing like the production dressing i guess of like uh it looks like yeah, man. Um, Everything's great. 
<laughs> yeah, when I used to watch uh, like uh, game review shows on Sky One and, and stuff like that. Like, oh yeah, thanks. Like you've got the same sort of like uh, I don't know, it's, it's really really well put together. So people mm. should definitely check that out. Uh, but yeah, Ben, um, anything else you want to tell people before we go? No, I think we've we've covered everything, haven't we? What are we what are we reviewing next week, Luke? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What we've got no idea. Fan that's not like us. The rest okay. of them. We're going to be yeah, reviewing yeah. something. Yeah. You should do what some more that? cult classics because I remember when you were going through the list and you like the IMDb list and you all these cult classics were coming out and they I, I love all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got I've got Sounds a good. recommendation for you guys for the trash tapes. Okay. Um, have you heard of a film called The Boxer's Omen? No. So there's a, there's a whole like a uh, load of films that were like Chinese black magic films, and, and The Boxer's Omen. I think it's on YouTube, where you, you can find it with a bit of digging. It's about a kickboxer slash Zen Buddhist monk who's in this magical battle throughout the entire film with like an evil uh, black magician guy. And the, 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 that's all it is. But like the rituals themselves are so insane. Like the, the practical <laughs> effects are bizarre. There's a guy who decapitates himself, and his head hovers towards the other guy. So that's strong. It's 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 right up your street. I think it's. it's I, I think it's really a great film. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, you sold me. You sold me with the self decapitation. I don't know how that works. Um, I'm totally game for that. Yeah. Yeah. De- decapitations get extra points, don't they? Yeah, they do get to do extra points in the trashometer. So yeah, I'm totally game for it. Yeah, it it worked well for you guys. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's everything. So if you enjoyed the show, become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Hawk and Cleaver. Thanks to Kovach Kalman for our theme music. Thanks to Acast for hosting the show. Thanks to the listeners. If you enjoyed the show, please consider giving us a rating review on iTunes and remember to hit subscribe. Join the Facebook group, Horror Hangout Board of Advisors. Uh, thanks to my co-host Ben for being a right horror dude, but also thanks to Mr. Ed and Johan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Thank very you much, guys. <laughs>